the band was put together more or less rather soon before the concert. Yeah, it was. That was just our first attempt to go out and do anything and uh, I actually got them through, I phoned up a few people in, in that I knew in San Francisco because I had to, you know, the, the tour was set before I had a band. Oh, right. Really? Yeah. And actually Jello Biafra of the Dead Kennedys put me onto these guys, three of them, the guitar player who wasn't really suitable and the other two who, who were eminently suitable and who stayed with us. I heard that the guitar player was of the Dead Kennedys, that isn't true. Uh, the first guitar player was, okay. yeah. How'd you run into him? Uh, we played a gig with Beefheart one night. Yeah, really? Where was that? That was at the Stone, San Francisco. Hmm. Great minds meet. <laughs> <laughs> Just fell in love, huh? Well, quite put it together. Not quite, <laughs> <laughs> quite immediately. These things take time, courting. Right? Yeah. Well, what was going on uh, within Beefheart's band at that time that you know, eventually made you decide to leave? Well, I, that was probably the end of a bunch of touring that was to uh, promote an album called Dock at the Radar Station. And that was just about the end of uh, that tour we'd been touring for a few months. And then we started to take a break and nothing's really ever happened since. Yeah, so it wasn't through any problems or anything, then it just kind of no. was happened. Yeah, just, uh, it's always fun to try something different. Yeah. So you think you're going to stick with Snake, or? Sure, stick gonna, with Snake, stick yeah. with this, stick with that. As long as you're having fun. Yeah, well, I'll just do it as long as it feels right. As Chuck Mangione would say. As long as I deign to have you hanging around. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, PL. Sorry. PL? <laughs> <laughs> Enough said. Yeah. <laughs> so Eric's a great boon to the group. He's, uh, he's really great in getting to arranging things differently and changing things around and even changing around the old stuff. And it's just like a really good new, new input of energy and ideas and things which is really great to have after all you know i don't want to be a dictator of, of any kind of product you know basically things get better and better when you intermingle another another good set of advanced ideas into them and they get to be more fun too because i mean when you're doing it yourself I mean, your own ideas become somewhat predictable to you, even if they're, even if you strive for unpredictability, they become predictable in that. You know, someone else's ideas are off a completely different path, which That's you mold into your own. Yeah, more than one person giving ideas, you don't usually end up with just one's ideas or the other. A lot of the time, it's just you know, right. you clash off each other and get a get a new product, it's a product of both. How much uh, input do the other members of the band have within the arranging or anything? Well, it's, anybody can say whatever they want, mm -hmm. you know. They don't tend to say all that much. But and then if I like it, they can stay in the band. <laughs> <laughs> One day at a time. Uh, the, the first two albums, I believe, you did in the studio completely yourself. Or yeah. with some help from the residents. Yeah. <clears throat> We well, co they co-produced it with me and I played all the instruments myself. Well, both albums? Yeah. So then the third album is rather a, a big departure from that, in that the residents, by the credits at least, weren't around so much and... No, they weren't involved. Of you, not to mention a whole, whole group of people recording. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I don't think, I don't think one should continue doing the same thing over and over again. And, as far as being in the studio on my own and doing all the overdubs while it was fun and quick and pleasant, and I got to uh, I got to play out a lot of my fantasies. It was time to do something else. Just like the original shows that I did, I did some shows with tape, backup music, and actresses, and and they were considered highly artsy and and jolly, whatever those people thought they were. And uh, after the second time, I found them very boring to do, and there's, 
after all, I'm here to have fun and enjoy myself. That's why I stopped playing all the average Bozoid rock type music that you hear around nowadays because I like to enjoy myself and that wasn't very enjoyable for me. Likewise with the tape performances, I need I need emotions and feelings and things that react. A yeah. guaranteed performance every time, but I mean what a pain in the ass. Who needs it? The the tapes were everything but I mean why do it? Especially <laughs> the guitar. Yeah, and everything but guitar and vocals. I just play over the top and sing, you know. But if I was really getting into it, I would have to hold back. To, right, you, you got to stay on to play right. with the tape. You know, know. we leave things open, you know, that's, you know, that's what my fun spontaneity. If you got a good band, it's fun to play with. Yeah. Exactly. At first, it wasn't very good fun, you know, it was like real hard work. Nowadays, it's, it's really pleasant. You don't have to play every note all the time. You can hang back and listen and get a feel for what's going on, and it's a, it's a real pleasure. And sometimes the, the tension, the let and the go between, between the audience and the band just hits a certain perfect balance, and you can hear all your instruments on stage. And I mean, it's just a steaming experience. It's, it's really incredible. You really, feel, you really feel combined energies at work whether you believe in any of that stuff or not. I mean, once when you're there and you're doing it and you're part of it, then you just have to believe. There's not even any question yeah. about it. Do, do you see this as changing your music? I mean, well, I, I think actually each of your three albums are quite different yeah, than yeah. the one before it. Uh, now that you're into a band sort of situation, do you think the next album is going to be another or a completely different thing, or are you gonna... You know, none of them are just like, none of the things I do, I mean the first one was just like, totally experimental, shot in the dark, searching around for a kind of a feeling of what I, how I was gonna get across the thing that I wanted to do. I didn't just do that, and then go, right, blah, that's completely different now, you know. I followed along a certain logical line, you know, followed along the direction I was going in. Um, the, the band puts a completely different viewpoint on what I was doing, but at the same time, it's, um, it's still following along a logical line of progression, a logical line of writing, something that I'm into. And now, since we've done this, this new album, Manual of Errors, um, we were really getting into a certain groove that was beginning to seem really, really interesting to us. And, and uh, right now I'm just following it along, you know, the next album will be very different. It'll be different than the last one, but... But it'll be a, a, some kind of a connection. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Do you think that the band will stay the same for the next one? Mm, no, we'll probably have a new bass player for the next one. Why is that? Well, George B. George has got to go and live a family life now. Uh, yeah, I can do it to you. Yeah. Uh -huh fine fellow, I'm sure, but life goes on, right? Yeah. Uh, you, you said that after a while you just really wanted to get out of the more I mean, commercial, same thing that everybody else was doing. And what happened exactly with uh, Chili Willy and the Red Hot Peppers? How, how did that come about? So that you'd actually met the residents before. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, how is it that you decided to leave and come back again? Well, I have a very broad taste in music. Um, uh, this was a band that I formed with a friend that I wanted to be in a band with for a long time. We've been best friends for ages, and he was in like Savoy Brown, Blues Band, and various other people with John Mayer and Ainsley Dunbar and all these people. And uh, while I was doing uh, whatever it is I was doing, and we both became free at that point. And we decided to do it. We just played all the kinds of ethnic music we were we were into and flirting with and I'd write songs in a certain style, like a blues style or something like that. And it was jolly good fun. It was trailblazing at the time in England because all there was apart from us was a bunch of heavy metal dinosaur type bands, you know, heavy three pieces. And I mean, they were awful. That was all there was. It was very boring and very pathetic. And we did the Chili Willies as long as, uh, as long as was entertaining for us until it started becoming 
you know, boring to us. I mean, we were reaching the top of the heap as far as it goes in Europe. And it just wasn't looking very inviting to us to stay there.